once again delighted. I want to say welcome uh, my viewers to this great time. It is a moment of divine inspiration, a time where we gather together to share God's word and be blessed as the Spirit of God teaches us the deep things of the Spirit and our lives get transformed. I believe through this moment you'll be transformed by the word that God is about to bring to us for it's a great word that has been birthed in the Spirit and I believe it will turn your life around in Jesus' name. Today we are going to share a message that I've entitled uh, Moving with the Move of God. Moving with the Move of God. We are going to read God's word from the book of Exodus uh, chapter number 40 verse 36 to 38. Moving with the move of God. The Bible says, and I read God's word, Exodus chapter 40, verse number 36. When the crowd was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. But if the crowd was not taken up, then they did not journey till the day that it was taken up. For the crowd of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day, and the fire was over it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. This is one of uh, the interesting scriptures that you find in the Bible, talking about the journey of the children of Israel. And I want us to pray as we embark on this word and hear what God has for us today. Let's pray. Precious, mighty, and everlasting Father, in Jesus' name, we are grateful for giving us a moment like this to hear your word. I pray that you speak to us. I pray that you minister to us. I pray by your sweet spirit, you'll cause this word to be a blessing to us. And this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Now, we are hearing about the children of Israel. They are moving from the land of captivity. Uh, God delivered them through the hand of Moses, from the hands of Pharaoh, and they began their journey. And all through their journey, as the Bible records here, they had to depend on God to lead and guide them. Remember when God called them, he said, I'm going to take you through a way that you have never been before. You're going to go through the wilderness that you have never been before. So you have to depend on me to show you the way. And the reason why I'm sharing with us this word today is because many of us, we find ourselves wandering in the desert, not knowing uh, how to move forward uh, from where we are stuck. And I can sense in the spirit there, most of us or a number of us who are watching and viewing this message uh, who are stuck. Uh, they have been moving around in the wilderness and they are like what the Bible records, moving around the mountain. They are not making uh, headways and they look like they are lost. And the children of Israel, to avoid uh, being stuck, they had to depend on God to lead them and to guide them uh, throughout their journey. And as the Bible says today, uh, that the Israelites had to look up to the sign that God had given them. And the Bible records that during the day, there was a pillar of crowd. And during the night, there was a pillar of fire. And at this scripture that we are reading today, this powerful scripture says, whenever uh, the pillar would settle on the tent of the meeting, the Israelites would stop and wait for God to minister to them at the tent of the meeting. And they would, not, they would not make any move until the time uh, the crowd would move uh, from the tent of the meeting. So they kept uh, their eyes on the crowd, waiting to see. And if it's by night, they had to see whether the pillar of fire is moving. As long as it was on the tent of the meeting, they wouldn't make a move. As long as the crowd had not made a move, they wouldn't make any move. They wouldn't dare to make a move. Look at us today. How many times do we move? without consulting God? How many times do we start a project without even involving God? And along the way, when we get stuck, that's the time we begin uh, trying to look for help from God. Where was God when you are beginning the project? Was he not the same God you are trying to call at this point when you are stuck? I want to advise us today through this word. It is important to begin with God. It is important to move with God. And it's even more important to end with God. Now the children of Israel, the Bible says, they couldn't move until the crowd moved. What is the word of God teaching us today? I think there are three things that were key to the Israelites. For them not to move, they had to keep their eyes on the pillar, whether it's the pillar of the ground or the pillar of fire. 
If they had to keep their eyes there, then it means they had to be alert and sensitive to the move of God. The Church of Christ today, I appeal to us to be alert and sensitive that we can discern the move of God so that we do not move ahead of God or find ourselves dragging our feet behind God. God wants us to partner with Him. In this dispensation, God is releasing His anointing with high level manifestation of His power. But He's asking, are you willing? Are you ready? Uh, do, you, do, you, do you want to surrender yourself to me that I may be able to do the things that I want to do with you? For I can only do this if you're in partnership with me. I can do these things only if you're in partnership with me. Why do you want to move ahead of me? Why do you want to come behind me? Why can't we walk together? That's the cry of God that I'm uh, getting today in my spirit. God is asking, why can't we move together, my children? Therefore, the word of God uh, here helped me to understand that for these people of God to be in a position uh, to move with God, they had to be a rat, they had to be, sen they had to be sensitive in the spirit so that they can discern the timings of God. These were people that the Bible records who moved like the sons of Issachar, men who knew times and what needed to be done, men who could wait to see uh, that God is waiting and they keep waiting. When God is silent, they were silent. When God is not moving, they were not moving. I pray that the church of Christ today we will borrow from the Israelites and stop making moves without consulting God. Let's be alert and sensitive to the move of God. If God has not said we move, let us not move. If God says it's time to move, then let's get on the move. The second thing that I see with this scripture, there is no way that the Israelites could see uh, the crowd moving or stopping without again being patient. Because the Bible does not record for how long the crowd will be on the tent of the meeting or be at a particular station. So they had to keep their eyes and if God stops for two days, they had to stop for two days. If it's for hours, they had to stop for hours. So patience was a requirement to be in a position to move with God. And to all of us today, my viewers, patience is a must. We cannot move with God without developing the spirit of patience. David said in uh, Psalms number 40, I waited for the Lord patiently until he inclined his ear and listened to my cry. Are you willing to wait upon the Lord? What is the hurry for? Why are you running to? Without God. Wait on God. Wait on God. Move with God. Learn to move with God. The other thing that I see, apart from the patient, these people, they had also to maintain their focus. They had not to move their eyes from what God was doing. They didn't allow distractions to come their way. Today, we have so many distractions. They are coming in different shapes and kinds. We are allowing distractions to come our way and we miss on the move of God. We miss on the instructions of God. Some of us, we are distracted by money. Others are distracted by the fashions of the day. There are those that are uh, distracted by the technology that's coming to us today and many, many, many other things. The world is full of uh, distractions. But people of God, less purpose, less uh, uh, make it our point in life to move with God. Let us learn to move with God. Let's be determined not to walk ahead of God or try to run behind God, but walk with Him step by step. The Bible says, uh, that talks about a man by the name Enoch, a man that walked with God until he was no more. Think about that. A man that walked with God until he was no more. The Bible again talks about Abraham, a man who was afraid of God. The Bible talks about another man um, who was a friend of God, Job. A man that was a friend of God to the point that God is asking, have you considered my servant Job? He knew the faithfulness of Job. Remember Job could even offer sacrifices for his children, even for things that they had not done. He would say perhaps when my children meet for party, they might uh, do something against God. He would try even to sacrifice ahead of time so that he can move with God, so that even his family may not miss on the move of God. I come to you with a challenge today. Let's purpose to walk with God. Let's go back to being sensitive, to being alert to the move of God. Let's draw 
grace from God to be patient. And again, let's not allow distraction. Let's maintain our focus on God. Ministers of the gospel, children of God, the church at large, let's fix our eyes on Jesus. He's the one who is calling us. He's the one who has these great things that he has in store for us. We cannot afford to miss on his move. I welcome you today to join me as we seek to move with the move of God. Let's move when God is on the move. When he stops, let's stop and wait. Even if he tarries, he will surely bring to pass what he has begun to do in our lives. Don't move ahead of God. Don't move behind God. Move with God when he moves. I want to invite us to a prayer session as we surrender to God and ask him to help us to move with him. Can we bow our hands and pray together? Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful for reminding us today that there are times we have raced ahead of you and there are times you have dragged behind you. There are times you have missed on your move because you are not sensitive, we were not alert to your leading. I repent today and I ask that you may help us to understand when you're on the move, that you may be like the Israelites who never moved ahead of God. They waited for the pillar to move so that they can make a move. And your word says, and so you guided them in all their journey through the wilderness. Therefore, Lord, I pray for your people and I pray for myself today. The Lord, you help us to be patient. You help us to keep our eyes on you, to be alert and to be sensitive so that the things that you want to be done, they will be done in our time and in our generation by your help. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading and ministering to us today in Jesus' mighty name. And for them that are not born again, I invite you today to receive uh, our Master and Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're not born again, why should you wait again? Why should you continue moving without God? Why don't you bow now and make us of this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I realize that I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness. Forgive me for all my sins. I will come into my life to be the Lord and the Savior of my life. That prayer is a powerful prayer. If you mean it from the heart, you are born again. Walk with the Lord. Look for a church where you can grow in faith. Let the Lord minister to you. And so take this opportunity to welcome you to worship with us at PMI Thicker Road at Garden Estate. Come, let's get blessed together. We are Prime Ministries International. Uh, in short, PMI Thicker Road. I'm Pastor Joseph Mwangi. I'm pleased to bring you God's word. Be blessed. Let's meet again in the same channel. Asante Nisana.